Hi, this is Larry. What I'd like to talk to you a bit about today are select subselect statements. To start with, I'd like to review the select concept. Well, we all know that select concepts are all based upon using tables that are already established in the DBMS. The select statement is then created as a query to go from the tables to select different tables within there and the columns within those tables to produce them. The result of all this is simply called a result set. And this result set is basically a derived table that we have. Now if you think about it, what you both see here is a table and the result set are both entity sets, meaning they contain data elements that are put together as for each individual entities, a set of entities. The table is just defined by the DBMS, the result set is defined by the select statement. And the result statement is then a derived table and where it exists is totally in RAM. Just keep that in mind as we continue on. So the subselect concept is based upon the fact that you have the select statement, you're taking things from a table, but you're also going to be taking things from a result set. Meaning that a subselect concept is that you have the tables in the database, but you're also going to derive tables based upon another select statement that creates a result set that's in RAM. The result of this, of course, is going to be another result set that is then produced for the informational purposes. So the subselect concept is basically based on using tables in the DBMS, but also using other select statements to be able to create the final result statement. So if we look at subselects then, a select statement is basically and simplistically states is another select statement which creates a result set that is used inside another select statement. Nested, you want to think of it that way, a nested select statement. It's primarily used by where or having clauses to define the selection criteria. It can also though be used with a from clause as to define a table within the from clause, but can also be used in the select clause as a column to define a column. So subselect statements are created in memory before parents, this parent statement is executed, meaning you have the primary or parent select statement and you're going to have these child or other subselect statements that are involved. Multiple subselect statements can be nested and run from lowest to highest. And I like to think of this as imagining a reverse nested if statement. In an if statement, it starts as the processing flows, it goes to an if statement. If this is true, do this. If not, do this. If not, do this. And it just keeps nesting down from top to bottom. The way it works with a subselect, it starts from the bottom of that criteria and goes up because you cannot get to the top level until you have a definition of what the bottom level is providing you. This is very true, especially when you're looking at where or having selection criteria. So there's an ask to let you know is a maximum of 17 different subselect statements can be nested. Now let's look at an example of this. Let's consider we want to list all the customer names, customer numbers, and customer email with the maximum credit limit for salesperson 6. So we can see here we know we need to have the customer name email and from customer where sales rep equals 06 we need to know what the maximum credit limit is. Therefore, we can create another select statement, a subselect statement, that selects and creates the maximum credit limit from customer where sales rep is number six. This result set then is created first, and then this other result, the primary or apparent one, is created utilizing this as another, almost like another table inside there. All right. See how that works? So let's take an example and look at a few of these things in actual SQL. One of the things when we look at uh, using subselects gets kind of confusing because it is confusing to some and it does get more complicated because at some points you can use inner joins or join statements instead of using uh, subselects. Let's take a first look at this first example here. What we're going to want to do is return the invoice number, date, and total for all vendors in California. Okay, and this is basically we're going to need a select statement. We can go invoice number, invoice total, date, invoice total. And we can pull it from simply two different tables, invoices and vendors. 
where invoice vendor ID equals vendor's vendor ID and vendor state equals California order by invoice date. If you look at the result set for this, this is the first set I've several on here, this revolves, re, uh, result set returns exactly what we're looking for. Now if we go back up here, we can actually look and see that the subselect, we can do a subselect in the same way. So let's look at this. We can go subselect the same information on the top, but in case instead of putting another from another vendor, the table name there, we can actually say we're vendor ID in this select statement. And of course, order by invoice date. So what does it do? It does the same thing. Instead of going to the vendor table, it actually creates a uh, derived table from the vendor table to qualify it, then be able to create it. Both work, and if we go down below, you can see both tables produce the same amount of same exact results. So let's look at what if we wanted something more actually how this works uh, for qualification. Looking at the criteria that you have and it's more used in the conditional statements of where in the from statement or having in a group by. So let's look at this. So let's say we want to provide the invoice number, date, and total with a balance due that is less than average for all balances due. Well, we know we could have this information and create a select statement, but what we have to determine first is the average of all the balances due. The system doesn't know that. It's not kept in a table anywhere. So let's just run this like just what we'd have to do to use this. Here's a select statement. Always start from the bottom up if you want to think that way. Kind of reverse engineering always when you create SQL statements. In this case, I know if I do select average with this formula from invoices where this equals is greater than zero. So I can determine then the average of all the balances due for those that have greater than zero. The invoice total etc. is greater than zero. Okay, so I know I have that. Now I've determined what the average is, and if you go down and look at my the result set here, you can see here it says no column name because I didn't name it. So we have no column name, and you can see what that average invoice total is. Okay, now if we go down here below, let's just look at go back up to the query here. It says use result set as a subquery as a condition and where. We can take that exact same sub select statement we have, put it in as a sub select statement within the where. Watch. We know we needed to come out with the invoice number, the invoice date, the invoice total, and then this formula is balance due from invoices. And then we also want to make sure we're picking and comparing those things that are currently in there that are greater than zero. But the condition and where and invoice total minus payment total is, is less than the average that's out there, and then we just order it. So what we've done is taken that previous select statement we had is then put it inside of here. When we run it, it comes up with the results that we want to see. So here was the result that we saw from the previous one, the inside, now it's the nested select statement, and using that at, these are the results that we have as a result. So keep in mind as you look at doing all your queries with multiple tables, there may be certain conditions or certain ways that it doesn't seem to work just right by joining tables. You're going to need to look at using select statements. And a lot of times it comes into use with the where or the having clauses where you're going to need to have certain selection criteria, some conditional issues, and you need to create a derived result set to be able to put inside your query.